This is Twit. At all of the uh, different shows I've been at, everybody comments about the trap deal. And they said, can you tell us one more time what goes bad with a trap? So I thought we'd do uh, some short shots to uh, take a close look at traps, and then we'll give you a live one here. But uh, if we may, Victor, let's go ahead and start with uh, the brief short shots. Um, we talked about uh, the MFJ um, uh, HF and six meter radio. And um, most notable was the volume control that you see in the big blue uh, down below the frequency. Um, I'm not sure why they would take up that much room for volume, but the rest of the gear performed uh, pretty darn well. Um, it had a spectrum scope, sort of. It's a sampling type. It's not an active one from left to right. But uh, for a small little box like that, software-defined radio, pretty amazing. But here's what we enjoyed most about working with a radio, and that is using it like a man pack. Well, in this case, a woman pack. That's Susie in 6GLF. And notice the antenna. That's not part of the MFJ lineup. You may have to go to a local CB radio shop. But that's a simple loaded 10, uh, make that 11 meter antenna. And uh, if you want uh, 10 meters, you just collapse uh, one element. You want 15, you add a little bit to it. Uh, but the unit is totally portable. And uh, for backpackers, it's a great way to go. Well, let's go from portable to all the excitement at Quartz Fest, and that's Bob into OML. Oh, my Lord. 100-plus contacts uh, working the FT8 mode, and uh, these were overnight contacts. He had been up all night. He's going to be at uh, Yuma, we understand. And, uh, wow, take a look at that computer listing of all the activity on FT8. He was using a stepper IR vertical. He had that vertical tuned to a T, and uh, it really pulled in uh, both Asia uh, as well as European contacts <clears throat> as well as HF. So, uh, Bob, good job. I want to repeat that at uh, Yuma this coming weekend. The three-element or four-element tri-band, sometimes a quad-band beam antenna, may have different ways of achieving resonance on each of the different bands. And one of the most common ways are decoupling traps. And there you see the uh, little large lumps there. We're taking this one down to uh, fix uh, what uh, everybody said was a bad trap. And <clears throat> Underneath uh, those uh, with black ends on each side, underneath the uh, trap um, uh, is something you need to know because you don't need to send the traps back to the factory to fix them. And um, uh, one of the most common things we found is when we found the antennas installed where the trap holes up. No, that's not for water evaporation. That's for rainwater to filter out through the bottom. So make sure that your trap holes on any trap antenna are pointing down, not up like we see here. And when you install the trap, make sure and install it in the direction of the instructions where the arrow says which way it goes. So what's happening in a trap? Well, a trap is a resonant circuit that's going to prevent energy from going any further out to the ends of the antenna elements. And uh, the first uh, traps that you're going to run into would be the 10-meter trap followed by the 15-meter trap. And uh, if there's a 40-meter operation, there'll be a 20-meter trap, and then that goes all the way to the end. The LC circuit, here's the L, the inductive reactants, which when equaling the capacitive reactants creates resonance. Very little to go wrong here. Just make sure that those rivets are nice and tight if you decide to take your trap apart and make sure you don't see any burn marks uh, by running uh, five kilowatts into a trap that can only handle about 1,500. Seldom have I ever seen a burn mark on a trap. The more common problem occurs inside once you put on that outside capacitive coupler. Now, notice the black ring. The black ring hides what you need to be looking for. 
And the little black ring is nothing more than to keep the bugs out. When you remove the ring on one end, you'll see that the capacitor terminates to nothing. It just plain terminates. It's at the other end. Uh, so now you've got to remove the other black uh, little uh, bug catcher. It's the other end that has the problem. And here we've removed the black protective cover, and there is the problem. Notice that that small sheet metal screw is sort of wiggly, and that wiggly means that the outside capacitive reactance in that outside coil is not going to make a solid contact. So you have a capacitor that is not quite making it, but you can't see that you've got a bad uh, loose screw until you whittle away at these little black end pieces. And you can get more of them from MFJ for the Cushcraft antennas and from the other antennas, uh, or you can fashion up your own. They're there only to keep out the bugs and mice and other varmints. Once you peel that off, you're going to see that pesky little screw. And if you can rotate that outside trap capacitive reactance cover, if it rotates, eh, 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 then you know you've got to tighten that screw up. No big deal. Get a nut driver or a screwdriver, put it on that screw and tighten it up. And it's also a good time to double check that all of the other traps uh, are uh, nice and tight as well. So, Victor, if you'll come back to uh, the live trap here, and um, here's one, and here's the way we test it. We put our hand on it. And we rotate it back and forth. And if you can do this on a beam trap antenna, then you've got a loose one of these. And that's that screw that needs to be tightened up. Because the way a, um, a, a um, parallel tuned circuit works is 10 meters, that's the, uh, the pink, will go out to the 10 meter trap and through High impedance will not travel any further than the 10 meter trap. The current circulates within that trap. Nothing goes out the other side, isolating out. For 15 meters, we're going to go to the green area. And on the 15 meter trap, it will go ahead and stop anything further than 15 meters going out. And it uses the 10 meter trap as a little bit of loading. And when we get to the 20 meter trap, that's the one all the way on the uh, 10, 15, 20 meter trap. We use the 20 meter trap if we have a 40 meter driven element on the antenna. If you only have two traps on each side of the driven element, then you have 10, 15, and all the way out to the end is 20. So that is how they create the capabilities of tri-band operation without relays and without any fancy capacitive stubs or anything like that. It's a simple LC resonant trap, and the traps do a great job, but only if this outside capacitive cover is well anchored to the boom, and there's only one area that anchors. So if you can grab it and it turns like this, you've got a loose trap, and I bet your SWR is jumping all over the place when that antenna is flexing in the wind. Yes, there are traps on both the uh, reflector as well as the driven element. And hang on, I'm getting dry out here. Those are uh, also problematic, but it's usually the driven element, especially if you have the 40 meter add-on kip, where that screw will either drop out or become very loose. So don't send your antenna back. Don't send the trap back. Just remove those little black end pieces and take a look. And if it's loose, take out a pair of pliers and uh, or a, a screwdriver and tighten things up. Here's that CB antenna that you can get at CB shops. And that's going to make a great antenna if you decide to go portable with one of the uh, MFJ uh, portable rigs that they'll have out shortly.